One of the most important things I did was I changed my mindset on everything. Biggest mistake I did when I played was I tried to play like somebody else. Destroyed me. I'm turning dreams into reality. In the lab with the formula in chemistry. Uh, they say the mountain is the top. I say that just scratch the surface. Yeah, we started at the bottom with no option but to go up You know what hurt is when you growing up with no love Where you knew how to die before you learn to hug Where you fought in the street or you pulled a gun And let off at the ops so you sold drugs Right, uh, now I'm rolling through the city Living at the top of my world Living at the top of my world Waking up to new views in the morning up under my girl Yeah, this is what it feel like Give it up for heck. All right Bro, if you want to sit down, sit down. Rolly, sit down, sit down, dude. This is, yeah, chill. R raise your hand if you don't know who I If you don't know who I am, it's all good. Raise your hand. We just see the, the room. Oh, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. So, Coach Weber was absolutely right. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. With everything, dude. We're talking about like, Everything happens for a reason to the T. So to get everybody's attention really quick, my viral moment to claim to fame was Oregon State reached out to me about two years, last year, before they had just won the championship before the 2019 season. So I flew out there to talk to the national champs. I had no idea who anybody was. I'm speaking to the team. And there's a dude kind of like where Jonathan's sitting right now, laser focus on me the whole time as I'm speaking, I'm telling him about my failures, about my life, about this and that. And when I'm done, I go, any questions? And the dude raises his hand. He goes, coach, your mindset of you dealing with failure, how do you deal with that? And he asked me a second question. No idea who the guy was. We're done. We take a team picture. The dude's right next to me. I leave, the guy sends me a DM. The manager calls me up and goes, Coach, you have an idea who that kid was that kept asking me all these questions? I have no idea. He goes, that's Ali Rushman, the projected number one overall pick in the 2019 draft. Ali just signed for a record $8.1 million with the Orioles. Think about how crazy that is, right? So before any of that, now we got a little backwards. So when me and Webb got together in 96, Right? He ran the pitchers. I was at the time what's becoming to be known as the biggest failure in the history of Miami baseball by far. Like literally failed like you guys have no idea. To the point that in my senior day, the only good thing they had to say about me was kind of like my little swag off the field, but nothing to do with my baseball skills. And it's a little difficult for me because I'm probably the biggest victim of baseball sports abuse you could find. My dad was beating me up from the youngest age possible for me to get to where a lot of you guys are now. So this to me became not fun. So my number one thing to talk to you guys here today is this has to be fun. It's not about a state championship. It's not about where you're going next year. It's not about who your private coach is. It's not about anything other than this has to be fun. That's number one. But if you don't take my word for it, I was lucky enough to interview the Gold Glove Award winners with Rawlings uh, in New York at the Plaza Hotel. And I interviewed everybody from Francisco Lindor. You guys have followed me on Instagram. You see it. Nolan Arenado, Cody Bellinger. Everybody says the same thing. And for the old timers, Ozzie Smith, Johnny Bench, Jim Cott, you, Keith Hernandez, has to be fun. There wasn't one dude that said, you know what, coach? My dad made it so miserable for me playing baseball that I decided to show him I'm going to become a baseball player. Not one. This has to be fun. That's number one. Number two, the only thing we can control in this room, every single one of us, is two things. Effort and attitude. Does that make sense? All of us here, what we can control is our effort and attitude. We can't control if Coach Webb puts us in the lineup. We can't control if he's going to make us our day one starter, day six starter. The only thing we can control is our effort and attitude. Why is that important 
for you guys. Usually when I speak, my last talk was to the Ultimate Gamers, the Fortnite guys, about 10,000 people. Those guys have the rest of their life to play video games. And they're making a lot of money doing it. But us in this room, we got four years, man. And whatever other place we're going to, it's not really that guaranteed. You think you are till you go there and then you have the best of the best there with you. So we got four years left. Where are my seniors? Raise your hand, seniors. A lot of seniors. Juniors? Any sophomores? And no freshmen. It goes by fast. Why am I focused on effort and attitude? Because I would have died to have the opportunity that you guys have here now. When I played, to play against Columbus was such a privilege, man. And it didn't look nothing like this. I spoke to CCNN, and I started to get emotional just thinking about coming to this place. And I didn't even have a shot. You are right now where everybody in town wants to be. And the most important thing you can, can do is control your effort and control your attitude. All right? Now, the starting lineup, that usually goes on its own. But the guys who really matter in this room is the guy who's not starting in the lineup that's going to matter when we get to playoff, the pitcher that's not getting the love right now from everybody that's going to get it because a guy gets injured, a guy messes up in school, something happens. So how do you stay focused now when nobody's giving you really that kind of love? One of the most important things I did was I changed my mindset on everything. Biggest mistake I did when I played was I tried to play like somebody else. Destroyed me. I'm a big dude that hit for contact. I tried to become a home run hitter. I was horrendous. Hardest thing about being this age is being ourselves. Some of us have straight hair, early hair, no hair, blonde hair. Be yourself, man. Don't imitate the guy that seems the sexiest. Because as I notice, and I speak to everybody now, there's specializations for everything. And if you really look at it, they paid Garrett Cole a certain amount, but Strasburg wasn't too far behind. And they paid Nolan Arenado an amount, and Rendon wasn't that far behind either. The key is to find what you're good at, man. Another thing that's big with you guys here is communication with your coaches. For my seniors, right, the more you show leadership with communicating with your coaches, the better this is going to go because there's so much wealth of baseball here that we all take for granted because we think we know what we're doing. We think we do. And when we mess up and they scream at us, we like, oh, I don't want to talk to him. My coach is not playing me. I don't want to talk to him. Do the complete opposite. Trust me. As soon as you're done here today that you finish up there, Talk to every single one of your coach that pertains to you. Coach, where do you see me this year? In case if he hasn't done already, do it again. And if he tells you you're the third string catcher, tell him, thank you very much, coach. We're going to go states this year. And go as hard as you can. Do not make the mistake of thinking you're bigger than anybody here because we're not. That's really hard for young Latin dudes to understand. Because we have that extra gene of machismo that got built in us. But the more we open up and stay humble and say, Coach, I think I've been acting like a dick all season or all off season or I haven't taken the weights as hard. Can we uh, reset, man? Can we reset? Because I'm going to give this all I got. But a lot of you guys do the opposite. You don't talk to Coach. You don't talk to Paul. You don't talk to Rolando. Why? Why? So, so much knowledge here, man. Remember, these guys have the hardest job. They put the lineup. Not the private coach, not your private strength coach, not your dad, not your mom. Not your... These guys have the hardest job. I got the easiest job in the world, so everybody loves me. I don't bench you. I don't cut you. I don't do anything. I just come with the truth. And if you don't like it, I could care less. Lived in a car for six months in Los Angeles after a failed baseball career. Luckily, J-Lo discovered me, put me on a TV show, and I go, I'm going to act. I was in a car for six months in Los Angeles. They didn't know a single person. What saved me was a little God-given gift called, I like people a lot. And then I'm able to put myself in your situations. And I want everybody in this room to win. 
So in case you don't have anything or you don't feel like you have something going for you, if you become the guy that just gives without expectations, you're going to win. I'm going to repeat that one more time because it's the most important thing I'm going to tell you today. If you become a guy that gives without expectations, you're going to win. Six years I tried to act in Los Angeles, failed miserably, but I became a celebrity baseball trainer because that's the one thing I knew how to do. And then I moved to a little town called Las Vegas for four years and I became the most successful nightclub host on a four-year run Vegas has seen for a while. And then after that, one day, the voice started talking to me, which might happen to you guys too. And the voice said, the legend can't die in a Las Vegas nightclub. So I came back to Miami, married my wife, and then I go, I'm going to come to Miami and I'm going to do baseball. My dad thought I was crazy because I had made more money than he had ever made his whole life. The highest player, coach, you might know this, in Vegas, there's something called theoretical play for my future gamblers out there. In you play in Vegas, you play table games, right? Theoretical play is the highest amount you play a hand times as long as you stay there. That to the casino means you're golden. You bet a lot of money and you stay there long enough to lose it, right? I had the highest theoretical player in Vegas at the time. Uh, my guy played roulette, 330,000 a spin. Go beat that. 330,000 a spin. A public school kid that went, unfortunately, to Braddock, except the 96 that I got to meet that dude. That's where I came from. And I humbly came here with a $100,000 car, went to go see that team play against Coral Park that you guys won one to zero in the heat because I don't want nobody to see my tattoos. I don't want people to think I was a liquid. And I sat there and with a cover like this drenched in sweat, I watched Columbus on two bunts, pretty much, beat Coral Park to go to the regional. Then I thought about it. I go, man, I go, man, what if I do baseball? So I'm putting gas in that station right over there, drove my car over here. I got to talk to Weber. It was the man upstairs. It wasn't me. I promise you. I go right there to the park. And I go, hey, man, where's Coach Weber at? No, man, they're over there. Where? Does he still drive? I said, whatever. No, no, he drives a Raptor. So I went over there, pulled up, and there enough there he was, Bub was coming out of the thing right there. And I go, Coach, what's up? Do you remember me? And he kind of looked at me, whatever. He's like, yeah, Hector, yeah, man. And we headed off there. I go, Coach, I want to come help Columbus. Right there, he goes, awesome, man. Well, what are you doing now? We caught up real quick, and I started working. I go, Coach, and this is where this becomes really important for everybody in this room. I go, Coach, I'm going to come help you for free. I'm going to repeat that again. For free. That's F-R-E-E, -E, free. Because a lot of you dudes come out of here, and you want stuff. Because now, this has made it real dangerous. Because a lot of dudes are popping off real young. But that's not all of us. So I started to work for free. And I started to do what nobody wanted to do. I got his story. Well, I go, Coach, what did you do coming up? Well, Hector, I was at Homestead High School. I did JV and I did varsity. I go, great. At the time, might be born now, varsity had nine coaches with me. I remember one time we joked that after a game, it was like, coaches, you want, we told Webb, do you want the coaches to take a knee too? Because there was nine of us. Because everybody wants to be here. I go, let them do that. I'm going to do the freshman with Valdi. So I started to do the freshman with Valdi for free. And I took that 3 o'clock game, which some of you guys saw me here on a Saturday where nobody wanted to be. It was me, you guys, and a couple parents. And every time I showed up at the coach's office, I brought water, and I would hook my boy up with his dip. Why? because I wanted to show him how grateful I was for the experience of being here, right? Think about that. Who does that? Coach, am I the only one that's ever done that? Think about that, man. That guy who had probably more than anybody ever coming in here, I'm telling you, my guy was spending 330000 a spin. I saw every single Mayweather fight front row sitting there with the biggest gambler in Vegas. You don't think I was hooked up? That web would tell me sometimes, Hector, I don't know, why. what are you doing here, bro? This is a little crazy. You sure you want to do this? I remember sitting with Roly and Roly talking to me. We're doing hit downs in the cage. And Roly telling me, bro, why high school baseball? And I go, Roly, I have no idea, man. But I've just connected to this place. 
I wrote, I got every single Columbus shirt. Ask him. I go, Coach, give me every single Columbus shirt you got. And I wore this thing like a, I, this is a little sad, but at 38 years old, I'm a dude walking around Columbus here all over Miami. Happy as can be. I didn't play one inning for you guys. I didn't. But here's the story. As soon as I got to Miami, I called the dude at Braddock, who was the athletic director now, who coached me a side coach. I wait, hey, coach, I would love to help us in the school, any help I can be. The guy treated me like a delinquent, man. He's like, actor, ain't you in L.A.? Did this and that, and he shut the doors. You know who opened the door for me? That guy over there. You know who's sitting here now? The biggest influencer. Now let's talk your guys' language. The biggest influencer in 2020 and social media is me right now. So I got the two biggest deals. Let's talk a little dollars. Some of you guys might like that. In influencer history with Rawlings and with New Balance. I got my own glove. I got about 17 gloves that they've sent me. I get paid now to showcase product, bats and products. And when you balance, I rock the shoes. 70% of kids graduating high school want to be influencers now, get paid to do YouTube. I got that at 40. All because when I got here, I said, coach, I'm going to bring some water. I'm going to do the dip. And then I watched. And I watched who the hardest working guys in the room were, the oldest guys. Rolando there came back from surgery. The guy could barely hop there. He was there in the cages. We come some Jays. It wasn't even Columbus playing. Balls are hitting back there. And I see Weber picking up baseballs at St. Brendan. I go, that's why he's a winner. But that, the guys in this room think they're too cool to pick up baseballs. Right? Only reason why I came here today and the only person I bothered to speak is to the Columbus baseball team. Nobody else. I could care less. Everybody else has to come get me. Because what if you're the one guy in here today that thought you were all world? Because it happens, dude. And now this is like, well, there's a little reality check. Because it's not about where you're going next year. It's not about a state title this year. Miami doesn't need more baseball players. We don't. We need happy dudes. Because there's leaders in this room, and this is still, yeah, football won a title, great. This is still the premier sport in this school. Another advice I'm going to give you guys is build relationships with everybody. Does that make sense? I don't care if you play the most dorkiest sport in the planet to you. You go find that person and be like, hey, what's up, dude? Are you going to come to a baseball game today? Well, Jonathan, you've never spoken before. I know, man. I'm, I'm just going so hard. Why don't you come to a baseball game today? And I'm going to go support you too. I'm going to go watch you in the band. If you do that, the success you're going to have in your life is going to be endless. Because a winning players, a winning individual's best friend forever is the relationships he's built and how he deals with adversity. I wish, I know the coaching staff doesn't, but I wish you guys get knocked out the first game. So we could find out what Columbus baseball is going to look like this year. Notice that's why when you guys always go 10 and 0, they always want that one loss so everybody can whatever. But if what if you have that mentality right now and whatever little activity that you guys thought was BS you're going to run today, you treat it like that's your last time in the baseball field. Like that's the last time you're doing this. Because I'm sure if SP gets one more shot, he'll take it. Right or wrong? To do it all over again, you might, you know what? I didn't do sophomore year right because I was in a battling competition. And maybe I didn't act so straight. Well, he didn't have Coach HP to come talk to him like you guys did. A couple more things, and then I'll get a couple questions. I'm going to get out of here. One of the things that helped me out so much with Coach Webb is my honesty with him. The biggest lesson he taught me, he don't know this, was, well, he did because I got him for a podcast for like an hour and a half, and I don't think he's going to do any more. And that went for almost 30,000 views, buddy. So that was awesome, was... When I came here, I had to go see the principal. And I had not done some great stuff there in, in LA. And it's the first time that I ever got addressed on that. And he goes to me, which this is so huge. He goes, you know, heck, what I would do if, if I were you just, let's go straight at him. Let's tell him before he has to research stuff and find out anything. So this goes for you guys out here because we're all 
unfortunately, going to make mistakes, man. It's what you do after the mistake that separates the winners from the losers. Like he always says, it's what you do after you walk the guy that you get the screaming from the dugout. What you do is what you do after you strike out on a pitch you shouldn't have swung. What you do. Because of my position now, I have a lot of big league people reach out to me. Famous people reach out to me. Scouts, president of teams, everything. I was with the director of scouting for the Padres yesterday. You know what he tells me? I care about players' demeanor when they fail. Not one of them said, I wait for him to hit a home run and I watch how sexy his home run trot is. Not one. I watch how he strikes out the side and I walk how he walks to the dugout and how manly and sexy that looks. It's when he strikes out, is when he pops up to the catcher. Does he fly to first base and forget about it? Or does he throw the helmet and act like a little baby the whole game? Because adversity is forever a winning player's best friend. Best thing that could happen to you guys is adversity. Does that make sense? Do I have everybody's attention a little bit so far? You got that? Relationships is huge, guys. Everybody wants to be where you guys are at now. The Columbus baseball team. Make friends with everybody. Talk to your coaches. Everybody. Coach Webb, what am I doing on the mound, man? Rolando, what am I doing with hitting? Yes, you might have a million hitting coaches. Great. It's all this, man. And the guys in here have had experience with the baseball you guys are playing. And they're doing it volunteering. See the difference? He don't have to be here. He don't have to be here. That guy definitely has to be back there. See how important that is? Is that cool? All right, let's get some questions. Come on. Oh, finally, before we get into questions, let's talk about this for a second. This is the greatest invention in the world. That's why I'm here, social media. Okay? Unfortunately, you guys aren't 41 years old to understand the difference between real world and this world. So for my baseball players that are in here, which is all of us here, when you use this, you think only your boys are seeing this. Be very careful what you do with this because this is not helping anybody, but it's hurting a lot of people. Because when I was acting and I did something a little stupid, it was sexy and I was rock and rolling and whatever. When you're an athlete, you know what you do? You get cut, you get benched, you get kicked out of the school. You're not playing anymore. Super careful what you do with your phone. The only thing better than hooking up with a hot chick is telling your boys you got a hot chick. Right? Super careful what you do with pictures of girls, who you send it to, anything. Because you might not know who that is. Super low profile on anything that isn't hustle and baseball. Don't talk bad about anybody. If you don't like somebody, don't say anything. If you think LeBron James sucks, nobody wants to hear that right now. Stay quiet. You become positive about stuff. Don't ever say anything about your school. That's negative. Trust me on this. The amount of guys that reach out to me, coach, I messed up. I talk bad about the team and I kicked out of a school. I get 500 to 1,000 DMs a week of people making mistakes. Very careful. I don't care that you post that you hit a home run here. To me, that's a tryout. I don't care that you say I'm showing rips here, working with my hitting coach, great. What a loser. Because the winners don't do that. After they've really won a lot. When I'm talking to Cody Bellinger, and the guy's like, listen, dude, when I was in high school, I was the smallest guy there, man. I had one home run. Now he's 6'4". Because this thing's a marathon. It looks like a sprint, and it feels like a sprint, but it's a marathon. It's what you do daily, hustle daily, long marathon. Because the season flies like this, but the season gets long. And where people get caught up is they don't got the right mindset. So they miss a workout a school, they answer a teacher the wrong way, do homework the wrong way, and here creeps up another guy in from you, and you are done, especially here, because there's no room for failure, because everybody here is good. There's a lot of good dudes here. So if you don't miss your opportunity, you're done. 
So if you felt, and only you guys know this, because the only worst enemy we can have is ourselves. And if you feel that you haven't given 100%, I strongly suggest everybody in here that feels that, go ahead, coach, I want to talk to you for a second. Coach, I messed up last year, almost like a confessional. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to go hard for you this year. Because you think it's where you're going to go next year. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. All right, let's go some questions. My man, Yepes, what's up, bro? Yepes, do you remember when they turned you? Here's another classic. This is awesome. So Yepes used to be, when Yepes got here, Yepes was one of those 18 shortstops that just gave you all the shortstop. And what happens? What happens? Guys that know more because they've lived, man. They've lived. These guys know because they see the patterns. Insert dude here. They saw the arm. And now the dude is on, it's, it's in the mix versus being cut in who knows where. Another thing before Yep is answer my question. If at some point you guys get a little distraught with the system and you feel like you're going to get love somewhere else, it's normal. It happens. Here's my other suggestion. Be what's called a man. Don't ever, 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 ever let your parents be involved with anything with Columbus baseball, except that senior day, you know, they all come to the field. Let them do that. Anything you want to say to a coach is be a man and you say yourself because they're going to respect that. Is that clear? That's how men operate. You don't talk shit about nobody. You be a man. You say, you know what, man? This is how I feel, coach. And if you got to go somewhere else, which has happened before, be man enough. Say, look, I'm going to tell you now, but it's not a personal thing, man. I love you as a person. I'm just not playing. And he'll respect that more. And you never know when you need some of that Columbus love that helps out a lot of people. Does that make sense for everybody here? Is that cool? And when your parents start because they just don't get it and they're going to start on you, they might have already talked to them like a man and say, listen, dad, listen, mom, this is what I'm going to do this year. If you don't like it, I'm going to go live somewhere else. Because the quicker you get off your parents' payroll, the faster you're going to win. Let me repeat that one more time. The quicker you get off your parents' payroll, the faster you're going to win. Because then you get to do whatever you want to do in life. I don't care if you drive a hoopty. Let these kids out here drive BMWs, Mercedes, all this flashy stuff. You get a bus pass and take the bus and be happy. Women respect more happier dudes than they do dudes that are trying to impress. Impress no one, help everybody. Does that make sense? You don't need a car. You need to be happy. You don't need swag. You need to be happy. Yabes, go for it. Deal with failure, bro. Deal with failure and having fun. Deal with failure and having fun. All you get is the failures, man. Why don't you think we know?